Welcome back to Galaxy Recaps. Today we'll be diving into an action thriller film titled The Awakener. Enjoy the recap. At the beginning of the film, a massive crowd of protesters gathers outside a government building, their fury palpable as they rally against Governor Sandro Correa. Accusations of corruption and embezzlement have ignited their anger, with the crowd becoming more violent, hurling objects and stones at the building. Inside, the governor cowers in fear, hiding under a table as the chaos outside intensifies. His worst fears come true when a masked figure discovers his hiding spot. The scene shifts to the elite DAE force, gearing up for a high-stakes mission. Their target, Governor Sandro Correa. The tension builds as we cut to a quiet moment, with Correa obliviously sipping coffee, unaware of the storm about to crash down on him. Without warning, the DAE team storms in, arresting him on the spot. They haul him back to headquarters, where officers Adu and Miguel are met with applause for taking down the corrupt official. Inside the interrogation room, the atmosphere crackles with tension. The officers lay out the damning evidence of Korea's corruption and theft of public funds. But Correa remains unfazed. He coldly threatens them, warning of dire consequences for anyone who dares challenge him. Desperate, he even tries to bribe his way out, hoping to slip free from justice. Later, Correa enjoys a lavish meal when his smug lawyer arrives, confident in his connections. He reassures the governor that his stay in custody will be brief, suggesting that house arrest during the investigation is all but guaranteed. Meanwhile, at DAE headquarters, the mood turns grim. The commander informs the team that despite their efforts, the evidence against Correa, particularly regarding health fund embezzlement, is insufficient to keep him in custody. Frustratingly, they're forced to release him under house arrest. Miguel, disheartened by the news, steps out to meet his family. His daughter, beaming with excitement, waits by the roadside with her mother, eager for their trip to watch a football match. Miguel arrives with a gift, a t-shirt for his daughter, and the air fills with joy as he helps her put it on while her mother snaps a few pictures. They head off, taking a taxi toward the stadium, but the day takes a tragic turn. Caught in traffic, they decide to walk the rest of the way when, out of nowhere, a stray bullet strikes Miguel's daughter, leaving her bleeding and unconscious. In a frantic rush, Miguel carries his daughter to the nearest hospital. Doctors rush her into the emergency room, leaving Miguel devastated, pacing outside, powerless and terrified for his daughter's life. Miguel waits in agony at the hospital, his desperation mounting with each passing minute. Unable to stand idly by, he rushes inside only to be met with a horrifying sight, patients in critical condition lining the corridors, abandoned and suffering due to the hospital's lack of resources. The scene shocks him, but what he stumbles upon next is even worse. His daughter Alice lies motionless outside the operating room. In a frantic confrontation with the doctor, Miguel demands to know why she hasn't been taken in for surgery. The doctor, with a heavy heart, explains that the hospital is severely under-equipped and patients are forced to wait for their turn. The words hit Miguel like a knife. The delay is fatal. After losing so much blood and without the life-saving treatment she needs, Alice's pulse weakens until it finally stops. She dies in front of her powerless father. Shortly after, Miguel's ex-wife arrives at the hospital, only to be crushed by the news of their daughter's death. The weight of the tragedy overwhelms her, leaving her broken in grief. In stark contrast, the film shifts to Governor Correa, who walks free due to a lack of evidence. Wasting no time, he boldly announces his run for the presidency. In a disgusting display of hypocrisy, he vows to increase funding for the healthcare system and promises to fix public hospitals. Despite knowing full well that his corruption caused the very neglect he now claims to solve. Meanwhile, Miguel is haunted by memories of Alice. Jogging through the city streets, the thought that she could have survived if the hospital had better equipment eats away at him. His heart burns with rage when he learns of Korea's release and sees the news of the governor's presidential campaign. The injustice hits like a punch to the gut. Miguel blames the corrupt system for his daughter's death and the anger festers inside him. Consumed by fury, Miguel heads to the protests erupting outside the government building. In a blind rage he charges at the police, who retaliate with tear gas, but Miguel, a trained special forces operative, is undeterred. Masked and determined, he uses his skills to overpower the officers guarding the building, scaling its walls with ease. Inside, he confronts and kills one of Korea's bodyguards before finally reaching the governor himself. Driven by vengeance, Miguel unleashes all his bottled-up fury, beating Correa mercilessly until the governor succumbs to his injuries. The next day, Miguel returns to work at DAE headquarters as if nothing out of the ordinary has happened. The chief briefs the team about the protests, 
stating that several suspects believed to be the masterminds behind the demonstrations have been arrested. Among them, Miguel notices a familiar face, a woman he briefly encountered during the chaos. Her name is Nina, a programmer. During her interrogation, Nina drops a bombshell. She knows Miguel was the one who attacked the police, and she has video evidence on her phone to prove it. Miguel's pulse quickens as he checks the evidence in the room, realizing Nina isn't bluffing. The footage clearly shows him during the protest, trapped in a dangerous situation with his secret on the line. Miguel faces an impossible choice. Knowing he can't afford exposure, he ultimately decides to let her go. That night, back at his apartment, Miguel carefully reviews the video and reflects on the day's events. Determined to keep his mission alive, he takes matters into his own hands. He tracks down Nina's apartment and finds her walking nearby. Confronting her, he's surprised when she offers a deal instead of a threat. Nina reveals she has something that could be vital to his cause. A laptop that once belonged to Governor Correa, she offers to help Miguel expose the full extent of Correa's corruption, including the embezzlement of medical funds and theft of hospital equipment. Realizing that Correa couldn't have orchestrated this on his own, Miguel reluctantly agrees to the partnership. Nina quickly hacks into Correa's personal laptop, uncovering a wealth of incriminating evidence. Together, they discover documents linking multiple high-ranking politicians to the corruption scandal. Armed with this explosive information, Miguel embarks on a personal mission for justice. One by one, he tracks down and eliminates each corrupt official, always wearing the same mask to conceal his identity. The media soon catches wind of the mysterious string of killings, dubbing him the Awakener, as news of the slain politician spreads like wildfire. After his initial strikes, Miguel approaches Nina at her workplace with a new request. He needs her to track down the powerful sponsors backing these corrupt officials. At first, Nina refuses but Miguel knows how to pressure her into cooperating. He offers a deal. Her mother's prison sentence will be reduced if she agrees to help. Torn between her loyalty to her mother and the risk of their dangerous mission, Nina reluctantly agrees. She visits her mother in prison, seeking advice on the value of truth. Her mother, jaded and cynical, responds that truth is nothing more than an illusion, shaped by those who wield it. In the next scene, Nina begins her investigation, diving deep into the profiles of the politician's sponsors. She uncovers the key player behind the corruption, Antero Gomes, a powerful figure pulling the strings from the shadows. Using her hacking skills, Nina gains control of the surveillance system in a building where Gomes is set to meet with Minister Marta Regina. Meanwhile, back at DAE headquarters, Adu is combing through the files of suspects tied to Governor Correa's death. He stumbles upon Nina's profile and pieces together a disturbing realization. Miguel, now known as the Awakener, is likely targeting Minister Marta Regina next. He tries to reach Miguel, but his calls go unanswered. Determined to prevent further bloodshed, Adu races to the minister's building on his own. Arriving just in time, Adu finds the masked vigilante, Miguel, about to strike. A high-stakes chase ensues through the building, and in a desperate moment, Adu shoots Miguel, wounding him. Despite his injury, Miguel manages to escape and flees to Nina, who quickly tends to his wounds. The next day, amidst the chaos, both Miguel and Adu submit reports exposing the damning connection between Minister Regina and Antero Gomes, the mastermind behind the corrupt officials. However, their findings are swiftly dismissed by their chief, who orders them to drop the investigation into Regina. Enraged and disillusioned by the depth of corruption within the system, Miguel decides to act on his own once again. Miguel tracks down Gomes at his lavish residence, where a grand dinner is underway. Attended by several influential officials, also present is Gomes' son, who confides in his father about his doubts regarding his readiness to become president. Gomes reassures his son, pushing him to embrace his political destiny. But Miguel, consumed by his quest for justice, takes a shocking turn. Instead of Gomes, he deliberately shoots the son, intending to make Gomes feel the same anguish of loss. However, Gomes is as ruthless as ever. Rather than crumble, he uses his son's death to his advantage. Spinning the tragedy to garner public sympathy, positioning himself as a martyr, Gomes announces his candidacy for the presidency, turning his son's death into a twisted political opportunity. Meanwhile, a new threat emerges from the shadows. Sequera, a cunning and methodical private spy hired by Antero Gomes. Tasked with investigating the mysterious deaths of corrupt politicians, Sequera relentlessly follows every lead. His sharp instincts soon uncover a startling truth. The Awakener has a partner. His investigation takes him to Nina's workplace. 
but he misidentifies her boss as the accomplice. Without hesitation, Sequera eliminates him, leaving no loose ends. When Nina arrives at work, she's met with the horrifying sight of her boss's lifeless body. Realizing she's in grave danger, she rushes to Miguel's hideout to warn him. But unbeknownst to her, Sequera and his men have been tailing her. As soon as she reaches Miguel, they launch an assault. Chaos erupts as bullets fly. Miguel orders Nina to flee while he holds off Sequera's men. Donning his mask once again, Miguel transforms into the Awakener and expertly takes down several attackers. But things take a grim turn when Sequera captures Nina using her as leverage. Sequera offers Miguel a ruthless deal. Nina's life in exchange for the assassination of another presidential candidate, Julia Machado. Trapped with no other option, Miguel reluctantly agrees, knowing he must comply to save Nina's life. Soon after, the police arrive at Miguel's hideout. Adu and his team, who have been tracking the Awakener, are stunned to uncover the vigilante's true identity, Miguel, Adu's best friend and colleague. The revelation hits Adu hard, but there's no time for shock. They quickly piece together that Miguel's next target is Gomes, at the upcoming presidential debate where Julia Machado will also be present. At the debate venue, Miguel arrives, laser-focused on his mission to assassinate Machado as per Sequera's demands. But just as he's about to pull the trigger, Adu intervenes, stopping him at the critical moment. What follows is a heated, emotionally charged confrontation between two old friends, now standing on opposite sides. Adu pleads with Miguel, urging him to abandon his violent quest, reminding him of the man he used to be. But Miguel, driven by rage and a twisted sense of justice fueled by his grief, refuses to listen. The fight between the two is fierce, each man giving everything they have. As they clash, the lines between justice and revenge blur, leaving Miguel at a crossroads. His next move will not only determine his fate, but could change the course of everyone involved, whether he chooses redemption or destruction. On the other side of the story, Nina, held captive by Sequera, proves her strength and resilience. Despite her grim situation, she fights back with fierce determination, eventually managing to wound Sequera severely and turn the tables on her captor. Meanwhile, Miguel faces arrest for the murders of the corrupt officials he hunted down. In a last-ditch effort to reach the man he once knew, Adu brings in Miguel's ex-wife, hoping she can convince him to abandon his path of vengeance. Miguel, reminding him that their daughter, Alice, would be ashamed of his vigilante actions and would not be proud of the man he has become. While locked in his prison cell, Miguel receives devastating news. Antero Gomes has won the election, cementing his power. This fuels Miguel's resolve even further. Later, his superior, Deputy Diaz, visits him under the pretense of an investigation. But Diaz has ulterior motives. He tries to kill Miguel to tie up loose ends. Resourceful as ever, Miguel turns the tables, killing Diaz and escaping from prison. Now a fugitive, Miguel gears up for his final stand, arming himself and preparing for the ultimate confrontation. He heads to the parliament building, where Gomes and his corrupt allies are celebrating Gomes' victory over Julia Machado. With ruthless precision, Miguel storms the building, taking down Gomes' men and fellow politicians in a brutal showdown. In the final confrontation, Miguel comes face to face with Gomes in his office. Unfazed, Gomes arrogantly tells Miguel that corruption is an inherent part of human nature driven by greed. But Miguel, unmoved by Gomes' words, shoots him dead. Miguel isn't finished yet. Surrounded by Gomes' remaining guards, it becomes clear that he had been preparing for this moment. He had planted a bomb in his car parked nearby. In a final act of defiance, Miguel detonates the bomb, causing the parliament building to explode and collapse, burying everything including himself under the rubble. The following day, rescue teams and forensic experts sift through the wreckage. Amid the destruction, only one trace of Miguel is found his mask, the Awakener. His body is nowhere to be found. In the closing moments of the film, an ominous scene unfolds. The figure of the Awakener, seemingly alive, is seen standing on top of a building aiming at a new target. The chilling final shot leaves the audience with the lingering question. Has Miguel's legacy, or perhaps Miguel himself, truly survived? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.